We have a new Paul George update to get to. Are the Philadelphia 76ers going to pursue him in NBA free agency? And are those chances increasing that they could steal him away from the Los Angeles Clippers? Also, we haven't talked about OG Ananobi. Are the Sixers interested in him? And are they going to try to poach him away from the New York Knicks? First, if you could pick one free agent for Philadelphia to sign, who would it be? Drop a name down below. You never know. We might include that player on a future Philadelphia 76ers. Now, and with that, let's start the show. And this is Philadelphia 76ers now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. Thank you so much for hanging out here. With the so many talented content creators out there on YouTube, but anytime you decide to hang out here with us, we're very appreciative and very thankful that you're just giving up your time to chop it up with us and talk some Sixers. And let's do just that. We begin with getting to the latest on Paul George. The Sixers believe they have, quote, a real chance to sign PG-13 this offseason, most cap space in the NBA. The Clippers once again falling short in the NBA playoff. They did not give Paul George the max. The Philadelphia 76ers would be able to do that as far as the fit. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a few moments. This coming from Kevin O'Connor of The Ringer. I think he does a really great job as a basketball analyst for Bill Simmons' site and podcast network. He said the Sixers think there's a real chance they end up with Paul George. From my understanding, talking with people around the league, they think there's a real chance he ends up leaving the Los Angeles Clippers. No guarantees, but there's a chance of it. Now, I did see some rumblings earlier this week that a lot of people inside the NBA think that Paul George is going to go back to the Los Angeles Clippers. But if they do not offer him a max deal, and if Philadelphia does, and Paul George looks at what Tyrese Maxey did in the first round, what he did all year, and then obviously thinks about the opportunity to play alongside Joel Embiid with an elite coach in Nick Nurse, could he decide to uproot and move from Los Angeles to Philadelphia? The Sixers' max offer to Paul George can be this. A four-year deal, $212.2 million, worth an average annual value of $53 million per year. The Clippers don't want to pay Paul George, reportedly, more than Kawhi Leonard. And Kawhi Leonard, who the Clippers extended despite his laundry list of injury issues, to a three-year, $153 million contract. So the translation there is that Paul George could make a lot more money with Philadelphia as compared to the Clippers. Now, he is a California guy that could play into this. He's been said to struggle with the criticism from the media. Not great in the pressure cooker that is Philadelphia, but as far as a basketball opportunity for him and an opportunity financially, Philadelphia can make a lot of sense for PG-13. Also consider, does Paul George believe that Kawhi Leonard can stay healthy? They've barely been able to play in a playoff series together since they joined forces under Steve Ballmer with the Los Angeles Clippers. That's an issue. Kawhi Leonard has appeared in just four of the Clippers' last 19 playoff games. And they still gave him that contract extension. Why would Paul George want to sign up for that uncertainty? I know that Joel Embiid has some uncertainty, but at least you're still playing alongside the durable Tyrese Maxey and for Nick Nurse, and that 1-2 punch and the 1-2-3 punch could be very intriguing to Daryl Morey, Nick Nurse, and company. With that, let's pop up another poll question here. Will Paul George sign with the Sixers? Type Y for yes, type N for no, predict it for us down below in the comment section. With that, we show you producer Jake Chipper who moved into a brand new apartment. He's got the new haircut. He's looking good, feeling good, and he's feeling optimistic about the Philadelphia 76ers, Chip. Absolutely. Look, we've talked about it. I think Paul George is a great fit for the Sixers. I think there's no doubt. They are interested. They should be interested. Perfect compliment next to Embiid and Maxi. But will Paul George, at, you know, as we just asked you, want to come to Philly and actually sign with the Sixers? Look, if I'm Paul George, right, there's the money aspect. He can get 
more from the Sixers than what the Clippers are willing to give him if it's true that the Clippers don't want to pay him more than what they gave Kawhi. There's also this to consider. When you look at the Clippers roster, right, who's at the top? You have Kawhi Leonard, who, aging, constantly injured, so he said barely has played in the playoffs for the past couple of years. They just get that extension. And then you have James Harden, who his future with the Clippers is uncertain. Will he even be on the Clippers after agent. this season? Yeah, yeah, he is a free agent. If he does, what does his contract look like? I think the Sixers have a better future outlook than the Clippers. You have a young star in Tyrese Maxey. You still have the MVP, former MVP, in Joel Embiid, and all this cap space that, yeah, you're going to spend on Paul George, but you have a blank sheet to sort of formulate the team around Paul George and your two other stars. So, look, if I'm Paul George and I'm thinking, you know, I'm entering the back end of my career, the back few years of my career, where do I think I have a better chance to win? Now, you know, Chase, you said it. He's an L.A. guy. Does he just want to stay at home and write out the rest of his career like that? Maybe. But if he really wants to have that best chance to win and get out of the West as well, which the West is loaded, he can come to the East, maybe have a little bit of a better chance or just really compete with Boston, I think, at the very top. Maybe he'll decide, hey, I can fit better with the Sixers. I like Maxi and Embiid better than Kawhi and Harden. And, you know, Nick Nurse, still a great coach, so... If I'm him, I would strongly consider the Sixers. California knows how to party, but the Clippers don't know how to win. And Philadelphia is in a better situation to win basketball games. So, Paul George, come across the country, join forces alongside Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid, play for Nick Nurse. You're playing for an elite coach in Ty Lue. I will give that to you. It's a great basketball situation. Now, I always run into the concerns and the questions about whether or not the Sixers need a third star. That's why we brought up Mikel Bridges, right? He could be a better option because he's not as needy. Paul George is better. He's more talented. But are there too many cooks in the kitchen where down the stretch and in the pressure cooker of a big playoff game, you run into issues? Who takes the shot? Who owns the possession? And that's where some of these super teams have failed a little bit and have had that lack of continuity. Now, coming up next, we're going to talk about another marquee player here in OG Ananobi of the New York Knicks. The Sixers reportedly interested in signing him as well, and the streets are talking. First, we're talking about Tyrese Maxey on this show, how he's a bona fide superstar, and these vintage print shirts are really popular nowadays. They were really popular when I was growing up in the 90s, early 2000s, but as trends do, they return, and you can get this shirt on sale right now, chatsports.com slash maxi shirt. You can don Philadelphia's Young Prince. We'll put that link down below in the show notes, as well as in the comment section of this video. OG to Philly? 76ers reportedly have interest in the two-way player, and obviously Nick Nurse very familiar with him, from coaching him with the Toronto Raptors. This coming from a Knicks reporter and Ian Begley of SNY. As, as previously reported, members of the Philadelphia 76ers have seen Ananobi as an offseason target. Paul George, also a target for Philadelphia. But if the Sixers can't get George, I could see them making a big offer to Ananobi. If for no other reason, then it would force New York to match the money. That part is really interesting. You're now, once again, reigniting this rivalry with the New York Knicks. And if anything, do you match that offer or give them a large offer so that the Knicks have to match and overpay, kind of like what happened between Danny Ainge and the Jazz and Paul Reed and the Sixers last year? OG's next team odds, if it's not the New York Knicks, Philadelphia 76ers leading the way at three to one. So you put a dollar down, you win that bet, you get three dollars back. Oklahoma City Thunder. Five to one odds. That would be an interesting fit right there. San Antonio Spurs playing alongside Victor Wembenyama. Six to one odds. Pistons at eight to one. They have a bunch of cap space. And then the Utah Jazz at nine to one odds. Now, a couple of things that we gotta get to to inform you. Ananobi has a $20 million player option with the Knicks. If he accepts, the Knicks can sign OG Ananobi to a four-year deal worth $117 million. If he declines, which is expected, then Ananobi becomes a free agent. I think that's going to happen because why would he not? 
The Knicks then could offer OG up to five years, $245 million. So why would you opt in, not opt out, if you can get paid a lot more money by either New York or another team? The expected market for OG and Anobi, about in that Tobias Harris price range, but I think that he would be a better fit than Tobias Harris. Not as awkward. Better two-way player, $35 million per year. Toby was making 36 for Philadelphia this past year. And teams really could drive up the price to just kind of screw the New York Knicks. Now, it would be a disaster, I think, if the Knicks let OG Ananobi walk because of what they gave up for him at the NBA trade deadline. They traded R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel quickly for a half a season of OG Ananobi, and they got you to the second round. The same point that you got to last year, and once again, you lost to a seed lower than you, that would kind of be team mismanagement. As for the conversation pertaining to Philadelphia, their interest in him, and whether or not Philadelphia should consider signing him. Really good 2A player. Here's my issue, though. If he's healthy. Now, Paul George, injury issues. LeBron James, older. Kevin Durant, older. That's why Mikael Bridges is a player who I really like, younger and durable. Now, when healthy, OG Ananobi is a high-impact player. When he was on the Knicks this past year and when he was playing, the Knicks had one of the best records in the NBA, if not the best record in the NBA. So the question is, can he stay healthy for a full season? He got injured multiple times with New York. And you look at the resume of games played for Ananobi over the last five years, 2019, 2069. That's great. Very nice. 2020, 2021, 43. 2021, 2022, 48. 2022, 2023, 67. And then this past year, only 50 games played. In the playoffs, though, we saw it in that series against the Knicks, the fit that he is. Jalen Brunson, such a ball-dominant player, like Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid are, yet he was comfortable. He found his spot, and he could play some high-level defense. Playoffs, nine games, 15 points per, six rebounds, 50.5% from the field, 41% from three, and then stocks. That is a combination of steals and blocks, almost two combined. So those are two really stellar defensive plays that he's able to give you, in the lead-up to the deadline last year, we were talking about the analytical numbers. He put some of the best offensive players in the game on lockdown. And so that's why it's intriguing. But Chip, what scares me is just the injury concerns. Because you pay all that money to OG Ananobi. You're paying all this money to Joel Embiid. Embiid and Ananobi get hurt. You are screwed. Again, that's why I circle back to Bridges. Young, durable, and I love the fit. What say you? It's, it's definitely a concern. He's such a talented player, and he'd be such a perfect fit skill set-wise for the Sixers. I mean, he can defend one through five. His offensive game has come so, so far. Yeah, it has. Especially the off-the-dribble game. I mean, seeing him attack the rim, he really got that free-throw extended midi down in that series against the Sixers, despite the elbow injury that he had. But, man, those injuries are just such a concern. If he's only playing 50 games, 55 games, and then gets hurt in the playoffs, and and B gets hurt in the playoffs, and then you're left in the same situation that you're left in almost every single year, and then you're also paying OG, well, it could get up to as much as $40 million, as some reports have indicated. You know, the Knicks are in an interesting situation where OG and an OB, despite, you know, coming off the injury, kind of has all the leverage, right? Because the Knicks traded for him, yep. knew he was on an expiring deal. The Knicks want to keep him because they gave up so much for him, but... There are going to be other suitors, as we said, for OG, who, you know, say the Sixers don't even really, you know, can't even confirm that they're going to get OG, but they could throw OG 30, 35, close to $40 million just to make the Knicks have to pay that because you have to imagine the Knicks are going to give them as much money as they need to to keep them. Right. It's a risk because it, you know, I don't know if I'd want to pay OG any more than, than 30, to, to be honest with you, just because of the injury concerns, even though he is such a high-impact player. I would love him on the team. I think I would stay away, though, again, just because the injury stuff really, really scares me. So you heard from us. Let's hear from you. Should the Sixers sign OG Ananobi, NBA free agency, a large deal, a big deal 
for a player who's injured often. S for sign, P for pass. Once again, your opportunity to join the show and be a part of it like I am, like Chip is. We'll see you next time here on 76ers Now. Thank you.